this year, Professor Mitsunori Saito and his team at Kyoto University in Japan demonstrated that they could deprogram specialized and fully differentiated human blood cells, then coax them into becoming the kinds of cells that could eventually produce eggs and sperm. And it's that last step that could be the breakthrough. For over a decade, it's been known that mature cells could be deprogrammed back into becoming stem cells. These deprogrammed stem cells display what's called induced pluripotency, and they can be reprogrammed to become almost any one of over 200 cell types in the body. From brain cells, to heart cells, to bone cells. In principle, these induced pluripotent cells also ought to be capable of becoming germ cells, or gametes, eggs and sperm. This would create a new, more reliable, and less invasive pathway for couples seeking to have children via in vitro fertilization. Infertility would be a thing of the past. Reproduction roadblocks would be cleared for single people without the need for a donor egg or a visit to the sperm bank. But germ cells are unlike any other cells in our body, and creating them in the laboratory has been fraught with difficulties and setbacks. This year, however, Professor Saito's team demonstrated that induced human pluripotent stem cells could become capable of being triggered into producing primordial germ cells. From these, they were able to create a type of cell known as an oogonium. These oogonia are the cells that lie dormant in a woman's ovaries for decades until monthly hormonal signals direct them to produce functional eggs. It can only be a matter of time before Professor Saito or others around the world who are working in the field manage to take that last step in producing human eggs. The creation of the other type of germ cell, sperm, is following a similar path, and he's already taken an important first step towards that goal in mice. In 2011, Professor Saito created induced pluripotent stem cells from skin cells taken from a mouse's tail and generated primordial germ cells from them. These were then transplanted into the testes of mice to complete their development into viable sperm, which were then used to fertilize mouse eggs. The result was a clutch of apparently healthy mouse pups. The next step will be to create human sperm. Today, no one denies that in vitro male and female human germ cell production using reprogrammed cells taken from almost any part of a man or a woman's body will be achievable in the not too distant future. The question of course is how such a capability could be handled. The clinical, therapeutic, and medical benefits of induced pluripotent stem cells are already proving to be almost unlimited, ranging from rejection-free tissue growth and even whole organ transplantation to personalized drug regime testing and genetic disease diagnosis. But making babies is a different matter, and beyond the science, there are profound ethical and legal issues that also need to be addressed. Changing the basic requirements for human reproduction could dramatically alter who can be a mother or father, and when. Grief-stricken widows and widowers could have children with their deceased spouse, made possible by a strand of hair, perhaps. Older people, especially women, no longer bound by their biological clock, could remain career-focused longer and delay starting a family. Same-sex couples could create embryos with blended genetics, true biological offspring of both partners. The social consequences of this new capability could be enormous. And within days of conception, each of those embryos could be vetted by a process known as pre-implantation genetic diagnosis to enable a choice to be made about what characteristics the resulting child should have. Some commentators believe that in another 40 years from now, traditional baby making may have become the exception rather than the norm, and that many, if not most, of our descendants will begin life in a dish under a microscope. While some fear a homogenized world of designer babies, 
where parents choose their child's traits as if shopping in a catalog. Others are convinced it's a future which will be better for everyone. Inherited diseases could be averted, vulnerabilities in later life identified and treated early, and positive health traits could be reinforced. Others worry that such a capability will further discriminate between those that have access to such a technology and can afford it, and those that don't or can't. It's a call that society will have to make in the not-so-distant future.